chapter 2, on page 13. What is coming out of my mouth? Oh, Lord. I will say to the Lord, quote, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I will trust, unquote. Psalm 91, 2. Notice that verse 2 says, quote, I will say, circle the word say in your Bible, because we must learn to verbalize our trust out loud. Basically, we answer back to God what he says to us in the first verse. There is power in saying his word back to him. We're not told to simply think the word. We are told to say the word. For example, Joel 3.10, Joel chapter 3 verse 10 tells the weak to say, I am a mighty man. Over and over, we find great men of God, such as David, Joshua, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego, declaring their confessions of faith out loud in dangerous situations. Quote, Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my Lord and my God. It is in you that I put my total trust, unquote. The more we say it out loud, the more confident we become in his protection. So many times as Christians, we mentally agree that the Lord is our refuge, but that is not enough. Preach, sister. Power is released in saying it out loud. When we say it and mean it, we are placing ourselves in his shelter. By voicing his lordship and his protection, we walk through the door to the secret place. One cannot miss the fact that this verse used the word my three times. Quote, my refuge, my fortress, my God, unquote. The psalmist makes a personal claim to God. The reason we can trust is because we know who God is to us. This very, this verse, excuse me, makes the analogy of God who I'm sorry. This verse makes the analogy of who God is. He is the refuge and the fortress. These metaphors are significant military terms. God himself becomes the defensive site for us against all invading enemies. He is personally our protection. Have you ever tried to protect yourself from all the bad things that can happen? God knows we cannot do it. Psalms chapter 60 verse 11 tells us, chapter 60 verse 11 of Psalms tells us, quote, deliverance by man is in vain, unquote. God has to be our refuge before the promises in Psalm 91 will ever work. Ooh. We can go to the doctor once a month for a checkup. We can double check our cars every day to make sure that the motor, the tires, and the brakes are in good working order. We can fireproof our houses and store up food for a time of need. We can take every precaution imaginable that the military offers, yet we still could not do enough to protect ourselves from every potential danger life has to offer. It is impossible. It isn't that any one of these precautions is wrong. It is that not one of these things in and of itself has the power to protect. God has to be the one to whom we run first. He is the only one who has an answer for whatever might come. When I think of how utterly impossible it is to protect ourselves from all the evils in this world, I am reminded of sheep. A sheep has no real protection other than its shepherd. In fact, it is the only animal I can think of that has no built-in protection. It has no sharp teeth, no offensive odor to spray to drive off its enemy, no loud bark, and it certainly cannot run fast enough to escape danger. That's why the Bible calls us God's sheep. God is saying... I want you to see me as your source of protection. I am your shepherd. John 10, 11. 
That's in John chapter 10, verse 11. Now, we may use doctors, protective military and police equipment, or bank accounts to meet our specific needs, but our hearts have to run to him first as our shepherd and our protector. Then he will choose the method he desires to bring about the protection. Wow, this is getting good. Whew. Some quote Psalm 91 as though it were some magic wand, but there is nothing magical about this psalm. It is powerful and it works simply because it is the word of God alive and active. Ooh, we confess it out loud simply because the Bible tells us to. When I'm facing a challenge, I have learned to say out loud in this particular situation, whatever the situation is, name the situation out loud. I choose to trust you, Lord. The difference it makes when I proclaim my trust out loud is amazing. Take notice of what flies out of your mouth in times of trouble. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Take notice of what flies out of your mouth in times of trouble. The worst thing that can happen is for something to come out that brings death. The worst thing that can happen is for something to come out that brings death. Cursing gives God nothing to work with. This psalm tells us to do just the opposite. Oh, Lord, speak life. Look at the principle in this next story of what these men did in the times of trouble during one of the most famous battles of modern history. All of England stood amazed with what happened at Dunkirk in the world in World War II when the Nazis had then pinned against the water had them pinned against the water and they couldn't get the men unloaded off the beaches fast enough to get them back to safety in England. The men were like sitting ducks when Nazi planes pelted those long stretches of white sand with soldiers. But that miraculous story still stands out in history today. One such correspondent, C.B. Morlock, reported an unexplainable and miraculous occurrence. 60 German aircraft strafed more than 400 men who were pinned down on the same sandy beaches without the benefit of any place to take cover. Although the men were repeatedly attacked by the machine guns and bombed and by enemy aircrafts, not one single man was hit. Every man in that group left the beach without a scratch. Morlock stated, I personally been told by Navy men who picked up those particular survivors from Dunkirk that the men not only recited Psalm 91, but they shouted it aloud at the top of their lungs, saying our trust out loud releases faith. Another time that brought life to a death this situation stands out in their mind, in my mind. The whole family was rejoicing when our daughter-in-law Sloan received a positive pregnancy test report and found that she was going to have the first grandchild on either side of the family. Since she had a tubal pregnancy once before, that resulted in a miscarriage, making her highly susceptible for another. The doctor ordered a sonogram right away as a precautionary measure. The disturbing report was no fetus was found. A great deal of water in the uterus had spots of endometriosis. With only two hour notice, emergency surgery was quickly underway, at which time the doctor performed a lapar laparoscopy, I'm sorry because I don't want to say it, laparoscopy, drained the uterus and scraped away the endometriosis. After the surgery, the doctor's words were, during the laparoscopy we carefully looked everywhere and there was no sign of a baby but i want to see you back in my office in one week to be sure fluid doesn't build back up when sloan argued that the pregnancy test had been positive he said that there was a 99 percent chance that the baby had naturally aborted and had been absorbed into the uterine lining after he left the room sloan was the only one not faced by the doctor's report 
What she said next surprised everyone. She emphatically stated that even the doctor had left her with a 1% chance and she was going to take it. From that moment, no amount of discouragement from well-meaning friends who did not want her to be disappointed had any effect on her. Never once did she veer from confessing out loud Psalm 91 and another scripture promise that she had found, quote, my child shall not die, praise God, but live and tell the works of the Lord. Psalms 118, 17. Oh, I wish I could tell you. Psalm 118, 17. A treasured book that was very important to Sloan during this time was Supernatural Childbirth by Jackie Mize. A strange look came on the technician's face on the next week she administered the ultrasound. She immediately called for the physician. Her reaction was a little discouraging to Sloan until she heard the words, Doctor, I think you need to come here quickly. I just found a six-week old fetus. It was nothing short of a miracle that such severe invasive procedures had not damaged or destroyed this delicate beginning stage of life. When I look at my grandson, it is hard to imagine life without him. I thank God for a daughter-in-law who believed in her covenant and is not ashamed to confess it out loud in the face of every negative report. Our part of this protection covenant is expressed in verses 1 and 2. He who dwells quote, he who dwells, and and then quote again, I will say, this releases God's power to bring about his amazing promises in verses 3 to 16 that we will look at in the next chapters. God is good.